If you love the outdoors and if you love going off the beaten path, I have two motorhomes that you will be very interested in. Both of these big trucks are diesel powered with Cummins engines and both of these motorhomes are four wheel drive and they're hiding a lot of cool features. In this video, I'm gonna show you all the features on both of these so you can compare them. And we're also gonna do a little bit of rock crawling. So let me introduce the contestants. Contestant number one is this Ram 3500 four wheel camper Hawk with a flatbed on it. It is a four wheel drive and it's riding on 37s. And contestant number two is this Ram 5500 four wheel drive. It's a Dynamax Isada 5. It's pretty huge. This one is about 32 and a half feet long compared to that measly 24 foot Ram 3500. John, thank you for bringing your wonderful rig here. Not a problem, my pleasure. So how about for the first comparison test of this video, we'll do a rock crawl. Sounds like a plan, let's do it. Uh, are you gonna crawl over this? Uh, once. <laughs> once, <laughs> all right. The uh, Dynamax is first. All right, let's do it. Not a problem. Okay, John, so I think we were able to show that your motorhome four-wheel drive system is really great in the winter, slippery conditions, grassy fields, and maybe sandy beaches. And fire trails. And fire trails. And this truck uh, is a little bit more capable because it's got more ground clearance. Let me try to get into this camper. It is a flatbed model, which means it's one of the larger uh, campers, truck campers that four-wheel campers offers. But let me show you uh, how this is done. This truck is quite tall and it has this aluminum ladder that I can mount. By the way, four-wheel camper, the entire construction is all aluminum. And it is a pop-up camper. So it's a little bit more compact. So when you're going off-roading, um, the clearance on this truck is about eight and a half feet high. And let me show you how I get inside. Boom, I'm ready, I'm going in. All right, let me see what it's like to get into this bad boy. Okay, nice, powered steps. So that's, that's a bit easier. All right, Jen, so you can control a lot of the features of this beautiful motorhome remotely? Absolutely, it comes with an app. So what is this app called? It's the equalizer system. Um, I don't know who the manufacturer of the app is. Okay, so what are you doing now? Right now I'm lowering the front legs. Okay. The front stabilizers so that we can level out the rig before we open up the slide. All right, John, so are you pretty happy with the level? I think we're in a pretty flat spot. We're pretty level to begin with. This just helps stabilize the rig as we move the slide in and out. All right, so what's next? Let's get the slide out. So once again, you can do that remotely too. That is correct. Makes life very easy. So then I just hit the slide out function. Little arrow. All 
right, John, I don't have a remote control, but I can also move my slide out. Actually, it's not a slide, it's just the roof. I can make my camper taller, so let's do it. Are you timing me? I'm timing you, okay. Done. So John, you got your app ready again? I got the app ready, here we go. So awning test. I'll turn on the light so you can see it better. I, I see. You're just showing off now. All right, let me show you my awning. John, are you gonna time me? I'm gonna time you. Okay, let's do it. Okay, John, well, thank you for letting me drive your rig. Not a problem. First of all, immediately, the seats feel very spacious and luxurious. Uh, nice are. leather. Yep. Uh, then, I can see basically the same controls, almost the same center stack, column shift. I feel right at home. Put it in drive and just go down the road, right? Correct. Okay, so another thing I want to see and we'll figure this out over there, is the turning radius. Oh right? yeah. <laughs> because it, well, this is a commercial grade truck, which yeah. means it has, you know, the big 19 and a half alloy wheels, right? Correct. Uh, heavy duty tires, and it also should have a nice cut to the steering wheel. Yeah, but it's, it's not horrendous. All right, so I'm here, right here, next to this white line. Mm -hmm. Let me cut this and see if I can make this turn. And this isn't two-wheel drive, by the way. Yeah, this is all two-wheel drive. You also have four low and yeah. four high. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Easy peasy. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, I want to try the same thing in my in my truck and see how well it does. So here's a question: Will it turn about? as tight as uh, your rig? Uh, let's find out. So it's about the same, right? We're in about the same place. About the same place. Okay, so, and I'm in two-wheel drive. Let me crank it. These are the big 37s. And I'm turning, 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 turning. Very Maybe similar. Maybe a little, tiny bit yeah, shorter. Tiny bit shorter. But, but you've got like, eight more feet of length on your truck. Yeah, yeah I'm 32 and a half. This Don't is about 24-ish. Yeah. So... That's not bad. That's impressive for your rig as well. Yeah. Under the hood of the Ram 3500 four-wheel camper, truck is a 6.7 liter Cummins turbo diesel and because it's a one-ton truck which is not a high output version of the engine this is 370 horsepower and 850 pound-feet of torque and this does not have an ice in transmission because if it did you would have a transmission dipstick on this driver's side instead the dipstick is on the passenger side so this has a 68 RFE transmission Let's take a look underneath the hood of the Dynamax. This truck is a 5500 chassis cab Ram medium duty truck. It also has a 6.7 liter turbo diesel straight six engine, but because it's a commercial truck, the rating is a little bit different. 360 horsepower and 800 pound-feet of torque and this does have an ice and transmission right there you could see that ASRC automatic transmission fluid right there so that's how you know this truck has a more heavy-duty transmission and a commercial grade engine hey John may I enter yeah come on in so dude um, I wanted to ask you so how come you purchased a rig like this? I mean, what are some of the capabilities you were looking for? 
um, not sleeping in a tent, not, <laughs> not sleeping on the ground, uh, but also, you know, give us some protections from inclement weather, because as you know, Colorado's weather changes every 15 minutes. So and why four-wheel drive? That was one feature that we weren't really expecting to get, and four-wheel drive was just part of the stock package. All right, can you show me around? Uh, sure. So up front, obviously, is the cap where we have the kiddos' lounge area. Um, back here, we have the queen bed, which is an RV queen. All right, John, let's step inside the four-wheel camper. So the staircase is a little bit taller. Just a bit. The door is a little bit shorter, but I really love this side entry because it opens up the interior. Let me show you. So right here, right now, this dinette is actually folded down into a bed. Oh. So this is actually wide enough and long enough for me to sleep. I'm just over 6'2". Over the cab, uh, there is this expandable bed. So it can be about this big, which is about like a twin, um, or it can also extend once to become a queen. So you can put these cushions in here like this, wow. and then if you need more space, you can put both of these cushions in here and actually extend it to a king. So so what we've done here before, we've slept, you know, my wife and I and two kids. Yeah. So the two adults and a, and a kid can sleep up here and you can actually sleep lengthwise or actually side to side. Mm -hmm. So there's a few different options here. Um, over here we've got all the control centers for the equalizer system, um, battery management, so this is where we have the auto gen start. Uh, we have um, sensors in our refrigerator so we can tell um, the, the freezer and the refrigerator aspect. Um, then you've got your solar controllers and then you've got your internal slide controls um, and then you've got your wine guard system up here. Is that the battery? No, um, this is just for the, oh, these are just the fuses for the, for the coach just itself. Just the coach itself, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then the satellite services up there. So we can turn it on and off. And you put lithium ion batteries Correct. on it. I had 18 amps, I didn't really like them. So I put in four Battleborns. Uh, but this is all the control area and the batteries. You mentioned your battery system, right? Correct. So let me show you my battery system. <laughs> Booyah! Battleborns. Battleborns. So, uh, just uh, this is a double, so a double battery system here. Th these are also lithium ion, and um, there is also two 100 watt solar panels on the roof. So very similar to yours. Yes. Yes, I got two 100 watt solar panels up top. Uh, Red Arc uh, management system for the batteries as well. Nice. And down here, let's see. Some of the more red arc components, your fuses, um, and everything is labeled. So if you do need to service something, you can you see it right here. You also have some of your controls here for your to check your water, uh, fresh water level, your thermostat. Some of your plumbing is actually in here, so you can get to that. You know. Creature comforts, you know, you've got a convection microwave, you've got a three burner cook, gas cooktop, um, dual sink, uh, which is really nice, extendable table. So if you need to flip out the table, give yourself even more uh, countertop space. Mm -hmm. 10 cubic foot refrigerator, the medic. Um, it's not on, we're, we're not leaving for a couple weeks yet. Uh, but you can see the size of this refrigerator gives you the opportunity to be out and off grid for five days without too much of an issue. Um, freezer. Um, it's dual, so it's electric and propane. Um, you know, and then you got spice racks and food. Um, over on the side, you got the dinette with under, you know, under seat storage. So you said you had a three burner stove, yep. minus two, yep. and this camper is carrying propane actually, oh. although the fridge is electric only. Ooh, okay. So it's kind of a combination of different uh, elements. It also has a recessed sink. Nice. Good job with the Dometic. Dometic components. You have a pretty sizable uh, restroom shower area, right? Yep. Um, I'm 6'2 and I can stand in there and take a shower very comfortably. 
Skylight. Skylight. Uh, that's the fantastic, yeah, the skylight above the shower, and then I've got the fantastic fan above to help keep circulation going. So you said, well, actually, you didn't say, how big is your freshwater tank? 78 gallons. 78. So in this case, it's about a 20 gallon water tank built in. And also, this Norwelt aluminum bed. Uh -huh. um, the truck bed also has about another 15 gallons, so yeah. altogether 35. So it's also carrying quite a bit of water. And not to be outdone, uh, a cassette toilet. Very nice. So with the bed in the back here folded, here's the shower drain basin right here. And this is where the shower head hooks up. And then there's a little curtain that hooks up to the ceiling and it's got little hooks over here. So in a pinch, you can also take a shower indoors. All right, so what do you have on the outside? Yeah, lots of storage. Um, you know, this is the tool bay, so we get a lot of the extension cords and adapters and surge protectors in here. And then we've got our, our cooler for the outside, um, pass through. We've got a table, all of our chairs, um, our stereo system is tucked up underneath. Aha, uh -huh, there it is. Um, full Bluetooth so we can you know, play the music and stuff straight from our phones to the system without having to run the TV. We have all the cooking items, so we've got our camp chefs and our carpets and our broilers and our flat tops. And we've got the propane tank quick connect so that we can Run the gas grill. Here's our water bay. Okay. Um, so we have the outdoor shower. So down here. Wait, what? My you have a Onan you thousand. You have a second Cummins engine. I do. You have a full generator with uh, yes. eight thousand. Okay, eight thousand watt. Eight thousand kilowatt. So yeah, it's a uh, it's a beast. On the exterior of the four-wheel camper truck. There are also additional storage boxes. They're right behind the rear tire, in front the rear tire, and up here there's additional boxes by box stop and trail ready that are actually mounting to the bumper. And of course right here is a two-inch receiver in this case on this truck and a big slide out. Kind of a big slide out drawer system here as well. There you have it, guys. The Dynamax Isada 5 is larger, more comfortable, more luxurious, uh, but the four wheel camper truck is more fuel efficient on the highway, it's more capable, it can go over uh, more obstacles and take you more places. So, there you have it. Let me know which one you love more for off the grid camping. And as always, go back to tfloffroad.com and tfltruck.com for all the latest news, views, and real world reviews. And by the way, I told you in the very beginning that both of these cost about the same. Well, they do. Uh, the truck with the four-wheel camper is around $140,000. The Dynamax, the way you see it here, started out as about $160,000. Of course, if you just want the camper itself, the Hawk, that will run you between 30 and 40,000 bucks just for the camper.